the importance of the blood of Jesus. Leviticus 17 verse 11a says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. The Bible regards the blood as a symbol and source of life. Just as the life of mortal man is in the blood, so life in Christ for the forgiven sinners come through the blood of Jesus. For Ephesians 2 verse 1 says, We are dead in trespasses and sin, and without the shedding of the blood there is no remission of sin, and there is no life in the spirit man. This means that without the shedding of Christ's blood, there is no life in God. Because of its relationship to life, the blood signifies the supreme offering to God. God's holiness and justice demand that sin be punishable by eternal death. Now the sacrifice of animals or even our own death was not sufficient sacrifices to pay for our sins. Our reconciliation with God required a perfect, spotless and blameless sacrifice, and this is why the perfect Son of God came in human form to offer His pure blood. As an everlasting sacrifice, to make a payment for our sins on the cross. The blood of Jesus accomplished it once and for all, and Jesus Christ became the eternal High Priest, entering heaven in the Holy of Holies, once and for all, not with the blood of animals, but by His own precious blood. Christ poured out His life in the ultimate atoning sacrifice for our sin and the sins of the world. Therefore the blood of Jesus redeemed us and now is a symbol of completion. And 1 John 1 verse 7 says, But if we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. From the Last Supper to the Crucifixion, the blood of Jesus symbolized the cleansing of our sins. The book of 1 John 1 verse 9 goes on to say, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. So the forgiveness of sin is achieved through the blood of Jesus. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness, the cleansing of all unrighteousness and transgressions is only done by the blood of Jesus. No amount of detergent can wash us clean from our sins except the blood of Jesus. In the New Testament, the blood of Jesus Christ became the foundation for God's new covenant of grace and it was prophesied in Jeremiah 31. At the Last Supper, Jesus said to his disciples in Luke 22 verse 20, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you. This new covenant gave spiritual life by a new and better way. The new covenant made provision for faith and trust in God, and it also gave us the belief that Jesus was God in the flesh. The new covenant brought us salvation and eternal life once we have received and invited Jesus Christ in our hearts. Along with it, came the provision of the Holy Spirit to live within us and enable us to follow Christ. The blood of Jesus is a weapon for the believer, and a believer has to learn to use the blood of Jesus as a form of an offensive spiritual weapon. 
Pleading the blood of Jesus on specific set of circumstances will grant you total victory and in most cases it is granted very quickly. This is how powerful it is to use the blood of Jesus in our prayers. It is a powerful spiritual weapon to have in your arsenal. Speaking and declaring the blood of Jesus upon yourself and family is something a believer has to do always for protection, even before adversity strikes. It can also be used for physical, emotional and mental healing. Pleading the blood of Jesus will rescue and deliver believers from dire predicaments. There is so much power in the blood of Jesus. When Cain took the life of his brother Abel in Genesis 4, God already knew what Cain had done before he asked him. Genesis 4 verse 10 And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. No matter whose blood is spilled, it has the power to speak. God said that Abel's blood cried out. It wasn't a whisper, but a cry that could be heard in the spirit world. Now can you imagine the power that is in the blood of Jesus? Can you imagine the commotion it causes in the spirit world when it is applied? The Bible says that the blood of Jesus speaks of better things than that of Abel. When you plead the blood of Jesus over your life, it serves as a warning and a means of protection against those who may seek to harm you. Just look at the Israelites when they were required to put the blood of a lamb on their doorposts for protection. Exodus 12 verse 23b And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to strike you. And just as it was with the Israelites, so shall it be with us when we apply the blood of Jesus. We are protected. Without the application it is not much use to us. If the children of Israel had kept the blood inside the house, it would have been of no use to them. They had to apply it over their door. As Christians, we must not waste the power that the blood of Jesus provides us with. We must apply it and plead it upon our lives, families and our homes for protection. The blood of Jesus has power to redeem us. Ephesians 1 verse 7 says, In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to his riches of his grace. Hebrews 9 verse 12 also says, With his own blood, not the blood of goats and calves, he entered the most holy place once and for all, having obtained eternal redemption. The blood of Jesus paid for our ransom according to 1 Peter 1 verse 18 and 19. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, this is why the Bible says, He who know no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. We are justified by the blood of Jesus. We are declared righteous. The blood of Jesus has made us right with God. According to Romans 5 verse 9, much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath 
through him, we are sanctified by the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 13 verse 12 Therefore Jesus, also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered outside the gate. God gave and continues to give us peace because of the shed blood of Jesus on the cross, according to Colossians 1 verse 19 and 20. For God in all his fullness was pleased to live in Christ, and through him God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. We have victory and overcome the enemy by the blood of Jesus through the application of the blood and confession of the power of the blood of Jesus in our lives. According to Revelation 12 verse 11, And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. The blood of Jesus gives power over the enemy. It is the blood that Satan fears. The blood of Jesus brings us into fellowship with God, according to Ephesians 2 verse 13. But now in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For without the blood of Christ Jesus, man is a long way from God. Romans 7 verse 19 For I do not do the good I want to do. Instead, I keep on doing the evil I do not want to do. Galatians 5 verse 17 For the flesh craves what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are opposite to each other, so that you do not do what you want. For the believer, you and I, the Word of God is the prescription for holy spiritual living. But regardless of giving our lives to Christ, we sin. Why? Why? God will reject you if you do this. What will I do to make God reject me, someone may ask. Most of us just know about a God who cares and is willing to meet our needs at every point of need. We know of God's mercies and the fact that he does not cast off whosoever comes to him. But if that is all we know about God, then our knowledge about him is not balanced. Such knowledge is biased. It is very correct that God's love is boundless. But if we are not careful and well informed, we will take God for granted to our own detriment. This is the reason, Galatians 5 verse 17, for the flesh craves what is contrary to the spirit, and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are opposed to each other, so that you do not do what you want. The error to avoid is merely serving our flesh by doing whatever feels good to us. But how can we live this way if it does not come naturally to us? Galatians 4 verse 6 because you are now part of God's family, he sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts. And the Spirit calls out, Abba, Father. The Bible reveals to you and me that the God of this Bible has a standard he has set, and we don't go to God imposing our opinions, our desires, and our standard upon him. The Bible clearly reveals to us that the standards he has set and we see in the Bible record many stories that reveal God's rejection of certain behaviors and lifestyles and even beings. The Bible urges us to walk in the power of God's Spirit. His Holy Spirit lives in the heart of every Christian. When we walk by His power, we won't indulge our own desires at the cost of others. Conflict that goes on in the heart and mind of every Christian, our flesh wants one thing, 
and God's Spirit want something very different. Human beings want to feel good, to be honored, and to possess what looks good to us. All of these, coming from our human nature, are tainted by our selfishness and pride. John identified these things as worldliness. The source of this strange conflict is announced in 1 John 2 verse 15. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father but is of the world. And the world is passing away and the lust of it but he who does the will of God abides forever. When the Spirit comes to live in our hearts, a battle sometimes rages. However, Scripture will show that those who are in Christ can win that battle by allowing the Spirit to lead us. That power allows us to love in ways we never would have under the law. Matthew 5 verse 6 Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Romans 13 verse 14 Instead, clothe yourselves with the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the desires of the flesh. 1 Peter 2 verse 11 Beloved, I urge you, as foreigners and exiles, to abstain from desires of the flesh, which war against your soul. You and I must fight the flesh by the power of the Holy Spirit described in the following scriptures. Romans 8 verse 9 to 11 But you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. Now if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. The power of sin and death has been eclipsed by the power of the Spirit. The Spirit breathes life into our mortal, sin-infested bodies, thanks to what Jesus has done for us. By sending His Son in the likeness of sinful flesh, God judges sin finally and completely. The sins of the world are concentrated and condemned in the flesh of Jesus as He hangs on the cross. So now there is no condemnation remaining for those who have entered into the life, death and resurrection of Jesus. God's Word clearly shows that if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, then He most certainly is going to give life to your mortal bodies. God promises clearly and unmistakably that if His Spirit has taken up residence in your heart, then, even though your body dies, He will raise it from the dead like He did the body of Jesus. This is the promise that God has given to His Church that he told the disciples that you should not go anywhere until you are endured with this power. John 14 verse 15 to 17 If you love me, obey the commandments I have given you. I will ask the Father to send you another helper, the Spirit of Truth, who will remain constantly with you. The world does not recognize the Spirit of Truth because it does not know the Spirit and is unable to receive Him. But you do know the Spirit because He lives with you and He will dwell in you. God became flesh and lived among humanity. 
not just to have a transaction with people and ultimately die, but to continue to be with them and to send His Spirit to be present within believers. So, God calls His Spirit indwelled people to something greater, something more significant. They are here as redeeming forces on this earth. Their time here is about reclaiming the things He has created. Believing God has created the entire world and that it is restored in Jesus, the believer's work here through the Spirit is to say, this belongs to God, and to help point out the beauty of creation to everyone, and most of all to live in it themselves by the power of the Holy Spirit who plants the teachings of the Lord in their hearts. Romans 7 verse 15 For what I am doing I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. The Holy Spirit of God is the answer. Does the Spirit of God live in you? He is your victory over sin, over fornication, adultery, and over your area of bondage. God bless you.